So let's take a look at how we can solve a nonlinear system of equations. So here's an example of what a nonlinear system might look like. And so you're doing a little translating, right? Nonlinear means at least one of your equations is not a line. So again, it's a system of equations, two or more, in this case two. I also only have two unknowns. That's good. This top equation is quadratic, right? It's an x squared, so that makes it nonlinear. So before we go ahead and, and solve this, and don't worry, it's using stuff you already know how to do. So we're just going to add on to combine, I guess, two things you already know how to do. Let's do a quick sketch of those two equations so that we have an idea of how they may or may not intersect, because they don't have to. Right? I'm sure you could imagine a parabola and a line that would never intersect, okay? in which case you would find no real solutions when you tried to solve your system. Be on the lookout for that. Okay? So this one, though, uh, y equals x squared minus 8. So I have a parabola facing up, shifted down 8. And let's see, I don't really know where those x-intercepts are. Well, they're the square root of 8, which I don't really know what it is, somewhere close to 3. And then my second equation, it's this one is a line, and it has a y-intercept of negative 5 and a slope of positive 2. Up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1. Oh, that's going to be close. I'm not sure if that y-value should be a positive or negative, but that's okay. So just for my quick sketch, and I didn't do a great job, but I can see, hey, I see two points where those two graphs intersect, and I can actually see them, which means they're real, not imaginary, no eyes involved. And that means I should be able to find them. Okay. Now, this came out of a textbook. Okay, it didn't come out of a textbook. It came out of my head, but I made sure that they were nice numbers. They don't have to be nice, especially if you're in a more advanced class. We could solve quadratic equations using a formula if we had to. Okay. Hopefully we won't on this one. Okay, so here's how we go. y equals x squared minus 8, and y equals 2x minus 5. Well, if y equals this and y equals that, then we can set the two right sides equal to each other. And once we do that, look what happens. We have an equation that's only in terms of one variable, x, and we know how to solve those. We're going to take a quick look and make sure, hey, it's quadratic. I have an x squared, and quadratics we solve by getting a 0 on one side. So I'm going to choose the right. So everybody over here has got to move. So x squared minus 2x. Add the 5, that'll make that a minus 3 equals 0. And if you're a big fan of the quadratic formula, go ahead. I happen to be a big fan of the factoring, so that's what I'm going to do. So x minus 3 and x plus 2. I'm sorry, x plus 1. I saw the 2. I was just making sure I, I added to get my negative 2 there. So let's see. Um, plus x, minus 3x, minus 2x. That looks good. Negative 3. So if these two multiply to get 0, then either x minus 3 is 0, which leads to x equals 3, or x plus 1 equals 0, which leads to x equals negative 1. Do those look about right on my picture? Eh, it's pretty close. OK. So now those are the x parts. Right, the x value is where that happens. But now we have to find the y part, the y partner. And right, the x equals 3 has a different y value than the x equals negative 1, so they go together like a point. You can choose either one of the equations that we started with to come up with the y partner. Okay. So let's just mix it up, and we'll use the top equation for x equals 3. y equals 3 squared minus 8. That's 9 minus 8 is 1. So this partner, y partner, is y equals 1. If x is 3, y is 1. OK, that kind of makes sense. And let's go ahead and work, right, mixing it up. 
to find the y partner when x is negative 1, we're going to use this equation, the second one. So y equals 2 times negative 1 minus 5. So negative 2 minus 5, negative 7 is that y partner. Negative 1, negative 7, right there. Now, you may be asked to write these as ordered pairs. And you should verify that both of these ordered pairs work in both of these equations. Okay, so let's, let's check one more time. Let's check that negative 1, negative 7 in the top equation. Does that work? So this is just a little check, and I'll go ahead and scribble it in up here. So y is negative 7. Is this a true statement? Careful on your calculators. If you're making it square your negative 1, first off, don't do that in your heads. And second off, if you're going to do it, wrap it in parentheses so that you make sure your answer comes out positive, because I'm squaring it, and so squared things come out positive. Negative 7, is that equal to positive 1 minus 8? Yes, it is. Okay? All right, good luck.